everyone and welcome to a new Flustered video. It's been a while and I have the feeling that I keep saying this all the time that I do this, that it's been a while, but unfortunately it has been a while, uh, I guess three or four months since I last filmed a video, but I finally got excited about filming again as I have something very exciting coming up. Um, inspired by Jojo's cross stitch um, not a many not a lot of people might know her she has a YouTube channel floss tube channel and um, she's active on the stitch mania Facebook group and inspired by her um, I decided to copy her and she started about four months ago a 52 starts project and since I've been accumulating a lot of stash over pretty much the past year and a half with uh, two trips overseas where I bought a lot of new things and large orders from the internet that I decided that I wanted to start some of the things that I have laying around. Plus I have a very, very big magazine stash of which I virtually stitch nothing, which also um, kind of annoys me because there's a lot of things in there that I want to stitch but I don't really get the, take the time for it, I should say. And besides, I finished a lot of the newer projects which I've started. This seems to be a trend, like you, f you start something you really like and then you finish it fast and then the older whips sort of stay there, never getting finished really. And a lot of the projects that I still have in progress are projects that I started in 2014 and 2015 when I just started stitching and a lot of them are not really my taste anymore. Most of them are very, very big projects, which also makes it kind of demoralizing to look at them because I know I have still a long way to go. But I think with this new project, things are going to change and I might actually knock off some of the things, some of the whips and some of the new starts. So. Back to basics, um, in this video I want to show you the whips that I currently have, which I just counted them quickly, there should be 18 or 19 there, whips that I already started either in 2017, 2016, some in 2018, although I finished the majority of the projects that I started in 2018, which is a good thing. Then after I show you my whips. I will show you the project I'm currently putting all of my time in and then I will show you a couple, I guess the first four or maybe the first eight projects that I plan to start for the 52 projects start. My original plan is to start my first start on the 31st of December, which is a Monday, um, depending on whether I get my current project finished or not, I might start a week earlier on the 24th of December, but you will, you will see this. Um, the plan going forward with the 52 starts is that I make weekly videos and I feel that I have enough to show you because um, on Mondays I will start my new start and I will work on this for four days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. On Friday and Saturday I will work on an old whip, one of the first 18 that I'm going to show you. So pre-2019 whips. On Sunday, I am going to be working on one of my new starts. So in the first week on the Sunday, this will just be the first thing I start will get worked on again on the Sunday. But in the second week, for example, um, I will be working on my first start. So just a short recap, Monday to Thursday, my new start, start number one. Then one whip for two days, an old pre-2018 whip, and then on Sunday, one of the 52 starts. And I plan for the Sundays to just start at the beginning and finish them off. So. Every Sunday I will keep working on start number one until it's finished, then I will go to start number two until it's finished, just so that I don't favor particular ones, because I would like to have quite a lot finished at the end of the year. 
Um, in general, my goal is to finish 19 projects in 2019. Um, my goal this year was to finish 18 projects. Up until this point, I finished 17. So this is why I'm very much hoping to finish the one project I've been focusing on for now. I'm just gonna take a sip. I have a nice Christmas mark sent on this side, just a present on this side, and it has milk because everyone should drink milk. Well, not everyone, but I just particularly like milk. And this is not hot chocolate, this is just plain milk. You see, sometimes I'm getting really light, so I guess I'm gonna go a little bit backwards. So, without further ado, first gonna show you the 18 whips that are pre-2019. I kept saying pre-2018, but it's pre-2019, so all the whips I have going on right now. Um, the first one is my oldest whip I have. This has been on a frame for pretty much the entire year and I have maybe stitched like a hundred stitches on this. Um, yeah, this is a very old project. It's probably my second project I started and my oldest whip. And I did not know what I was doing then, so I just started right in the corner, which is going to give me troubles later on, but for now, it's okay. Um, so I'm talking about the Pokemon Cross Stitch from Sprite Stitch, and this is the first generation. And I have done the first two rows, and I'm now working on page 11. Or have been working on page 11 for 11 months or more <laughs> and I guess whatever order I take them out now and show them to you will be the order I work in in the new year so on these two days that I'm gonna focus on a whip because also here I'm gonna just focus on one whip until it's finished and for the bigger pieces where it's divided in pages uh, I will take a page finish as a finish, so I won't be s stitching the whole piece on the two days because this would mean that I would be working on this piece only for the rest of the year. So um, just this page finish will be the first goal. And then uh, after, um, if I manage to go through the entire 18 and finish off all the other projects and are just left with um, bigger pieces, then I will just keep rotating them page-wise um, until I'm done with them. Sorry for this little pause. Um, I had to grab the charger for my iPad because it gave me the 5% left notification. So I just jumped up and grabbed the charger, but I'm back. Um, the continuation of my whip parade. So the second project uh, that is a whip is my okay. I'm gonna see, yeah my one and only Mirabilia that I'm currently working on, and this is MD One Damask Roses. And this is a project I've been focusing on for a little bit, especially in November. And I did get quite a bit done, but the blues were getting on my nerves. And also another thing in the pattern which I will show you. In a sec so this is how far uh, I am right now um, this is her knee and this is pretty much the middle portion I started in the middle uh, so I got a lot of her skirt done when I started stitching on it in November I pretty much just had this part done top part and I stitched all of this which seemed endless and then I decided to focus on the column, which I started doing here. But I don't know if you can see, but this is a really dark gray color. And according to the symbols, this is the color that's supposed to go there. But it looks very dark. And yes, on this it also looks dark, but not as dark as it does on my piece. Sorry if I put it like this, there's a lot of glare, so maybe here. There's a lot of, oops, <laughs> there, this is dark, but not as dark as my piece. So I'm not really sure, this kind of threw me off, because this looks good, the 
this part like on the side this looks good it actually looks like a column but the dark really seems too dark and I think I might actually go online to check if maybe there was a mistake in the chart and it should have been another color or otherwise uh, I'll just keep stitching with this color and I hope that it will look up ending uh, okay so um, yeah I have a little bit to go on this uh, the whole column the whole bottom section um, the flowers that are coming like three here pot of plants her whole top portion her head and then the complete border so this is going to be a long-term project but I hope this is going to be the second one I work on so I really hope to finish this uh, one Mira in in 2019 I'm gonna put everything away as I go. Oh, by the way, um, let me tell you what this is stitched on. Um, this is stitched on, to grab it in the bag. Did I write this down? Oh yeah. Um, a 32 count Belfast linen and natural opal. This is an opal. Sorry about the light changes. It's pretty overcast right now, so the light just keeps reflecting off my face. I try to keep them moving to a minimum, so especially when I do this, it's reflecting off my forehead, so I try to keep it to a minimum. Although I have to move, so which is unfortunate. Um, the next one is... A recent start where I did not do a whole lot of and this is the clouds factory Star Wars sampler and the only thing I finished is the a which is Anakin and I started working on the second and then I stopped so there's a long way to go here this is fall foliage 16 count Ada um, from the crafty kitten and this was, this is a nice fabric, a really nice color, but I seriously didn't know what to stitch on this. So I just decided to go for something very random. Hence my decision to put the Star Wars sampler on. And these stitch up really quickly, so this should also be going fast once I focus on it. The fourth one is a magazine pattern. And it's by Leslie Tier, and it's going to be a heart. I don't have really have the magazine right now to show you, but you're just gonna have to trust me that it's gonna look pretty when it's finished. And this is also a new start where I also finally used a hand dye, and this has been done on the Crafty Kittens Candy Tuft, also in 16 count Ada. And this is what I've stitched so far. So I backstitch as I go because Leslie Tears pieces are really dependent upon backstitching and I just feel like the placement was much easier for the rest of the things if I already stitched the green portions, the green swirls. And it says love here. As you can see this is a really, really busy fabric blues and purples and whites and pinks and I still have a very large piece so this is only going to be on the bottom part and the rest I will use for something else this project and me we are not really friends and this is because The symbols and the colors are very unclear. There is no, the threads were not separated when I got it. Um, this is a kit from Busilla, and Busilla don't organize their threads, which is annoying because I'm pretty sure I messed up with a couple of colors. Um, the project isn't too big, but just because I don't know if I'm stitching in the right color, um, it kind of throws me off 
Uh, it's still a very cute picture, so this is why I continue, but yeah, let's hope it will not be as much as a pain in the ass as I think it's gonna, going to be. Um, so, it is Bath Time by Risoa, which is cute. I mean, just a cat in a fishbowl bowl. Fishbowl? Yeah, fishbowl. With a little gold fish having to give up his home for the cat to take a bath. And it's bath time. And I have done, um, not too much, uh, but the reflection of the bowl and a paw and the part of the tail. And this is done on the, the material that came with the kit, which is, I guess, 14 count yellow Aiden, uh, which is ginormous, but you know, other way. Yeah. Also, when I focus on this, this shouldn't be too bad. I, I'm just gonna wing it. If if it looks cur if it looks good, I'm just gonna keep it in. So yeah, bath time by Brisa. Who needs highlighter when you can have the sunlight or the light reflecting off your face? This next one is one I really, 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 really would like to have on my walls, but this one will take ages. I keep everything in plastic baggies, so this is why you hear, hear all the crinkling. So the next, ooh! It also requires a lot of floss, a lot, a lot, a lot of floss. And this isn't actually thread, this is, or a normal thread, cotton thread, this is wool. So, it smells different. <laughs> and the project uh, I'm talking about is from Riolis, and I have called it, or I'm calling it Snow Owl. Because it's an owl, and it's in the snow, and it's a snow owl. And it reminds me a little bit of Hedwig from Harry Potter, so maybe I can stitch this in her memory. Um, this is done on the most stiffest piece of Ada ever, and I cannot really tell you what's top and bottom right now, but this is how little I've done so far. It's a really nice piece. Apart from the stiffness, it's really nice with the colors. It's just like yellow, brown, almost tea dyed. You won't be able to see this. It looks much more beige on the, I'm pretty sure it's the other way around. But yeah, I will figure this out once it, well maybe it's like this, oh no. Maybe it was the right way around. I don't know. No, it's like this. <laughs> um, but I will figure this out the correct way once I start stitching this again. And this is actually one I'm really looking for to hang in my house. Putting everything back again. Oh. Sorry for the crinkling, but with all the projects that I'm showing you, it will be super annoying to put them all away later. Okay, the next one, as you can tell, there's a trend. Trend, very big pieces, because I tend to finish the smaller ones, like, right away. The next one is also a kit, and this one is actually also one I really should get a move on. This is a kit by Lenart, and Lenart, I don't know if, if you might, you may or may not know, just... There's a needle and a thread hanging off, because this is apparently how I prefer to do things. So on camera, right now, I'm going to finish this stitch. And at least put the needle on the back so it's not hanging in around. Anyway, Lenard is a Dutch company, and I'm from the Netherlands, in case you didn't know. Um, so it's cool to be stitching something that was made and designed and produced in the country I'm from. Um, the kit is called Moorish Woman, and Lenar kits are notoriously expensive because they put high quality material in their kits. I mean, they're not design work kits. 
Uh, not that there's anything wrong with design work kits, but it's significantly better quality um, Luminar kits. And luckily, um, this is mostly background, which I don't have to stitch, and I will show you in a moment why. Um, I got this for, really, for super cheap, 25 euros, which normally this kit would have costed well over 60, I guess even upwards to 80, especially because this is not, comes doesn't come with Ada, but with even weave, and it comes with a hand-dyed even weave. So, very pretty. And the woman will just sort of go into this lighter spot. And then the column will go behind her head. I just did her face. Here you see her, her earring. Slowly but surely working my way up and down. But yeah, um, the fun colors are still going to come because her dress is blue. This is all colored greens. The column will be tedious, but maybe the pattern in the column will be fun. So. Up until now, it's still projects that I really look forward to finish. Um... Yeah, the ones that are going to be more of like a pain in the behind are going to come later. This one is cute. Don't think I would actually um, hang it up in my living room, but maybe like in my bath bedroom. Um, the only disadvantage or bad thing about this project is that it's stitched on navy blue Ada. And yes. This is as tedious as it sounds. So this one is from the Craft Collection Limited. I have never seen any other kits from them, but I s bought this on eBay and it's called Mystical Lagoon. And luckily all this dark blue is not stitched, yay. Uh, it has some meta metallic threads. It has fun colors, so it's not too boring. Which is good. Um, I worked on this also recently and I managed to pretty much finish the ship. And I started working here on the side to go up. Here's the castle going to be. Oh, I'm light again. Yeah, this is better. Going up to the castle. I'm trying to show you that the colors are looks good. Yeah, there are going to be a couple dolphins down here, so I made some good progress last time I worked on it. And also, this doesn't look too big, and it isn't, but just the fact that it's done on very dark blue is kind of giving me trouble sometimes, which means I definitely cannot work on it in the evening. Okay, I'm going to put this back later. Another project, which is going to take me a lifetime to finish, is a Soda Stitch project, which I love Soda Stitch. They have funny, whimsical, cutesy patterns. It's not anything I would really display, but still they're cute. And one of those that I thought was very cute is The Village and Fairy Tale, which is absolutely humongous. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses. And as I will show you, I have done a lot on this. Uh, I bought this as a kit. Usually you can buy, you buy soda stitch patterns, just patterns. And I bought this actually in Indonesia um, about four years ago. Four, is it correct? Four years ago, yeah. And I got it as a kit, which means it's nice because I already got the fabric and I'm able to, without costing an arm and a leg, to put all the houses in a row. And as you can tell, I have finished one whole house out of eight. Yes. And also these pieces are made by their backstitch. I mean, without backstitch. 
these wouldn't look as great. So this means the actual stitching is not too bad, which is why I think these will also go pretty fast once you start focusing on it. Uh, with this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to count each individual house as a finish or we'll do the whole project. I mean, technically, this is not bigger or s smaller than one of the other projects, like the snow owl or the, or the lady. So maybe I should just push through and, and finish. So the first one, Love House, is done. We're getting sort of through the halfway. Yes, this is a big one because this is one of my three hates I have on the go. And this is 12 Dancing Princesses by Kinuko Y Craft Arts. It should still be there. This, is, this looks absolutely amazing, but probably there are so many dark browns and greens and so we will see. And yeah, this is pretty much the first page I'm working on. This is how little I've done. It looks amazing though, but yeah. There's a long, 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 long way to go on this. Uh, this is done on, seriously, I couldn't tell you, but I guess 25 count magic guide one over one and this is how far I've come but I do very much love how much you're already able to see the detail so I've made the right decision with the bigness and just picking this in general and also um, this is going to be page wise that I'm going to do this because no way in hell so to say I'm going to finish this next year so I would be already very happy if I could finish one page because this would be my very first page finish on a hand. Because yes, I have three on the go, but I'm so intimidated by these big pieces that I barely stitch on any of them. So very much a goal in 2019 to get some page finish finishes there. another cutie one. This is by Dome, which is um, a company that's not readily available in Europe, but is available in Asia. And I picked, there's four different ones in these series, and I have three, and this is Japanese clothes. And as you guess, these are all just clothes, or like not clothes, but just a couple, and then every time they're from a different Asian country. And this is how far I came with the Japanese lady. So part of her crown, some of her eyeshadow and her earring, but that's it. Although I do know from experience, and you will see later too, that these stitch up pretty quick once once you focus some time on, on them. Um, the only decision I have yet to make, and this is not only with this one, but also with the other ones, the two in the middle are definitely going to be stitched. But then is the question, these are duplicates. So, I don't know. Am I going to stitch them both? Am I going to just stitch one side? Am I just going to stitch the people? I don't know yet. Perhaps you guys could help me decide. It seems just so tedious to stitch like the both the same thing twice. I don't know how much of a difference it would make in the appeal of the project. Okay. And then my one and only Joan Elliott that I have on the go. And this is from the book Magical Cross Stitch, which I got from a books, which is a, it's a former library book. And I was very happy to get it because I got it for, I guess like three euro, which is very little. And I'm stitching, whoop, let's go back to the page I can show you. 
Hmm, where did they put her? Here. And I'm stitching Sleeping Beauty. Um, Joan Elliott actually has two versions from Joan Elliott, and I guess this is the oldest one. I'm just going to see how this goes. Yeah. There's some threads hanging from this, but you'll just have to excuse that. I guess there was a needle in here at some point, but can't seem to see it now. And this is how much I've, wait, yeah, this is how much I've stitched. This is the top here, curtain, I started on her, her face is gonna come here. This is basically the top left quarter. I actually also might divide this and finish a quarter and then come back to it later. Although I would love to have this finished because it's really, really pretty. Especially here with the gold, the detailing is very cute. And I guess pretty much with all of them, once you start getting into them, they're fun. My next aid, which is a quick stitch, and this is by Hannah Lynn, and it's Quick Stitch Alice. I guess I'm gonna copy a lot of people by maybe first doing a black outline but I'm not sure yet I also just might do this by page and this is act on the most ridiculously big fabric ever the story behind this I had this on my computer and I was on a vacation and I was by myself for two or three days and I was totally done sightseeing I had already been in Thailand at the time this was when I was in Thailand for five or six weeks and I was just done and it was hot and I just wanted to stay in bed in my hotel room with air conditioning so I went out um, bought as many of the colors that I could for the first page of quick stitch Alice and I started stitching um, but the problem is I could only find this fabric and this fabric is a monster like this is pretty much I will get up like I'm, I'm standing up now and you won't be able to see because you just see fabric but pretty much this will come from my feet until here this is how big it is yes this is big also very big stitch count so this will also absolutely be enormous when it's finished but I started stitching on there and I could definitely do get way more progress than I have. This will f be way faster since it's a quick stitch, but this is how far I've done the corner of the first page. Also, my goal will be for this one to finish one page. Oh, I don't even know how I got how this was folded up but yeah we'll figure this out later I don't know. and to give you an ID this is about this from this page but yeah also a long long way to go slowly slowly going to the end this is also an eBay kit and this is um, a Jam Lin Platinum Collection kit called The King of Beasts. And you guessed it, it's a lion. I don't know, I always get drawn in by tigers and lions and I just like them. Also one that I did not spend a lot of time on. The kit came with an Ada in like a beige. Also unsure how this eye goes, oh like this. This is the eye, and this is all I did. Also, still a long way to go on there. Just gonna pick up the pace <coughs> a little bit, and I'm gonna drink something because my throat's getting itchy. Because I see I'm already like half an hour in. I'm just gonna grab the rest out and have five more to show you okay 
So, the second clothes kit that I have is Korean clothes, and this is the, uh, the least amount of work has been done on this one. The colors of these are absolutely gorgeous and bright. Blues and pinks and they come pre-sorted. These kits are amazing from Dome. I actually might have done a little bit more than I thought. Um, also here I started working on the lady and I actually already did a little bit of the background surprisingly. And with this one, it's the same story. Am I gonna do both sides or not? Yeah, um, decisions, decisions. The one I definitely know that I'm gonna also divide is this monstrosity, which is Pinocchio Wishes Upon a Star by the, the Disney Dreams Collection from Kanamar? Uh, no, this is from MCG Textiles. And this comes with so much floss, people. Yes, this is scary to look at. What's even scarier is that this is how little I have done. Oh wait, this is how little I have done. Yep, sad. Um, I'm gonna divide this in quarters and uh, I guess the part I'm working on now is this the half of Pin Pinocchio and um, make this like a four page project. And let's hope to f that I finish the first page. Although you've noticed I have a lot of whips and since I'll just be working two days a week on an old whip, this will be slow going. So pretty much I'm only working 104 days out of the year on old whips. And since I have so much, this is going to be a long time. Then I will have... This could actually be finished soon. And it's a shame that this was all the way on the bottom. Because I now just said beforehand that I was going to do it in the order that I showed you in. Because um, this actually could be finished soon. And this is the last one in these clothes series. Or at least the last one that I have. And this is Indian clothes. I guess the only one I'm missing is Chinese clothes because I have Japanese, Korean, and Indian. Because um, with this one I actually already completely finished the lady including the back stitching and started already on the motifs next to her which is the flowers which are already partly back stitched and here is going to come the Taj. It's not the Taj Mahal but it is a Taj. And I decided to do it on her side definitely, although I made a mistake somewhere. So I've, I'm fudging, like really trying very hard to sort of get it fit. I will stitch her partner after and then at the, when I stitched her partner, then I will decide if I stitch the other side or not. First I'm going to finish the background, then stitch her partner, and then I'm going to decide. Just to see how it looks without the background with the guy. I don't think it's really necessary for the piece to have double background. I understand why they did it. I really want to include at least one part of it. I could also do it just the, the people, but I think this would be look a little bit boring. Um, they have the example here, which they look okay, but this definitely looks better. Two to go. Yes. The mother of all mother projects. If 
I ever finish this in my life, I'm gonna be, this will be my proudest achievement ever. I might actually need to put this on my frame and stitch on it every day for like 20 stitches just so it continues. I might actually do that and put it on my frame and stitch like 20 stitches every day for the entire year. Um, at least I will get some progress and I will have the feeling that I did something. This is one that most people know exists. Um, and this is A Stitch in Time by Amy Stewart, both super sized and max colors. So yes. And I absolutely love, love, love this design and it would look absolutely amazing on my wall. But it's so incredibly intimidating. And the fabric for this is, this is the fabric. I mean, can you see how fat this is? Like, seriously, this is so much fabric. And I did not measure this, so it might be way too much, but yes. And to give you just like a tiny ID, I try to park here, which I already figured out parking is not my thing because I get way too confused with all the threads. I rather do cross country stitching, like over one page. This would work way better. But this is how much I've done. Super little, super, super little. So yeah. Um, actually now that I've said this, I really might make this my sort of daily stitch, like work on it 10 minutes, 20 stitches to see, maybe it might actually motivate me. It will take me 25 years to finish it this way, but at least I will have done something, right? And this is what counts. So if only I could finish this in 2019, but yeah, I would die probably if I just had to work on this because this seems like forever. I feel that I could finish this in my lifetime, but I really have to invest some time in this. And I'm not exactly sure how many pages, but I, I it's well over a hundred. And this is what I did of page one. Yes, this is how little I've done. And yeah, I mean, I know I'm showing you the charts, but first of all, you're not going to be able to see this. And second of all, seriously, you are missing like 99% of the chart. And then last but not least, which is very dumb that this is all the way in the end. So see, I might have to revise my whole idea of doing this in the order I show them in because this is like the tiniest part that, that is still in here. But yeah. Because this is Brooke, Brooke's books, Annie the Autumn Witch. And this is how far, oh wait, I will do this like this. This is how far I came with Annie. And Annie is kind of far. <laughs> this is the first piece. Um, I will have to do all her, her accessories, like the squirrel and things she has in her basket and the basket itself and her hat. I will have to do on an additional piece. Wait, like this. No, like this. <laughs> on an additional piece. But for now, it, it looks nice. Did her shoes and very sparkly Krennic. First time I worked with Krennic was cool. So yeah, this is how far I came with Brooks books. This would actually require the least amount of work. And this is all the way on the bottom of the pile. So maybe I've changed my mind for the next video as in how I'm gonna tackle this. Um, but yeah, so these are all the projects I'm gonna be working on throughout the year on Friday and Saturday. Uh, with maybe the exception of the very big heat that I just showed you, A Stitch in Time, which I might put on my frame and then work on or like in a hoop doesn't matter like it's big ass piece of fabric so maybe would be in the way on the frame but put on 20 stitches like 10 minutes a day of work and i'll keep you updated with how that's going too
Then now I will show you my one whip that I hope to finish this year to get my 18 finishes in 2018. And it's been going really good and I just picked one to uh, fill the time between me starting the 52 projects and basically since I stopped working on the mirror. So I just wanted to have something that I could finish and would be fun to work on. And this is Magical Creatures Calendar. No, not Magical. Mythical Creatures Calendar, which was the 2018 Sal from Cloud's Factory. And excuse my hanging thread, but this is how far I came up until this point. Um, I've stitched F, G, H, I, L, M, N. So I have seven letters completed, and I just this morning started on this one, which is the A. And I will continue with this later. So yeah, these seven are finished. Um, I can do one in about a day and a half, so with 20 days left in December, it could be a tight fit, but I could do it. And I was going to stitch this every month when we went along, but I just couldn't do it, so I just waited until all the pieces came out, and now I'm stitching on it all once. And this is skit stitched, stitched on... 32 Count Lugana and Twilight by Picture This Bless, which is absolutely gorgeous. I'm so excited to see this finished. I've done quite a lot because I just finished Leprechaun and Medusa and then did Nessie, the Ifrit, the Hippogriff, the Gamayun, and yesterday evening I finished Fafnir. And now I'm working on the letter A. The A is not so big, so it should be finished. Don't think today, but tomorrow definitely. So this is my 18th, hopefully 18th finish of the year. Once this is done, which I don't think I will, I don't think I will get this done in the next week and a half. It would be very ambitious, especially since I also work. So um, no, won't be done in this time. But, um, 31st of December could be, ooh, drawer moved creepily, um, sh sh could be done in the 31st of December. So, I'm just gonna keep it short for now, um, I'm gonna just show you the first, I'm just gonna show you the first project I'm gonna work on, the first start, and I'm gonna keep the rest a secret so that you don't see the same things over and over again. That's a very good idea. So, um, I used the Stitch Mania cells for 2019 as my guide as to what to pick um, so that I just curved myself a little bit. Um, I obviously know that I won't be stitching the cells in the weeks that they're on, but that's, that's okay. I just started at the top of the list and the first one was the Christmas all year round January Sal, which was C is for carols. And for this one I picked um, a kit because I'm going to do kit pattern magazine pattern or book pattern. So 333 three, three, so that I also get some of those magazine patterns out of the way. And the first one I'm going to start on either on the 24th or on the 31st of December is this kit by Dimensions, which is called Bell's Ornament. Very easy, already have everything I need. So yeah, my very first start is gonna be this. So, I guess this is gonna be a pretty long video. I am at 46 minutes now, so, um, what am I gonna still tell you? Okay, so, this was this is the intro video. Nothing has been done yet. My plan is to come back with weekly videos on either Sundays or Mondays um, because I will be working on three, possibly four projects every week. So I will have something to show you and I'd rather do, this is gonna be probably the longest video by far and I wanna do smaller about 10 minute episodes, so to say, throughout the year 
so that you have something short to watch in between all the massive videos everyone's been putting out, which they are cool, but sometimes you just need something short to go through. So uh, this is the plan, weekly videos on Sunday and Monday, and my first one should be there either on the 31st or on the 7th of January. So I hope to see you then, and I hope that you follow along with me throughout the coming year. And um, yeah, I hope we have fun. And um, yeah, I hope to see you next time. So bye.